Yo, what is good YouTube? What is good Giants fans? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Ty Life back with another Giants video. And we have some breaking news this afternoon from Jordan Schultz, wide receiver of the Giants second year Kadarius Tony has been officially traded to the Kansas City Chiefs for a third and sixth round pick. Uh, now, this may come to a surprise for many, um, and I think there were even rumors before the season that there were, you know, rumblings about Kadarius Tony being traded. I don't think in the in the uh, in the off season or preseason that Kadarius Tony was that was really being shocked by the Giants. I don't think. I think Joe Shane and Brian Dable actually did really want to evaluate all the people that were on the team before making a real decision going into next season when they have when they're less uh, cap stricken. Uh, but I think uh, this may have been something that was destined to happen uh, just based on Kadarius Tony's time with the Giants. Uh, the fact of the matter is, Kadarius Tony, no matter how electric he can be, no matter how fun he is to watch, and I personally am a fan of Kadarius Tony, the player, uh, he couldn't stay healthy. He really can get on the field for the Giants. And a guy that was going to be projected to possibly have a breakout year this season, and coming into the season as maybe the Giants' number two or number three receiver um, as an option uh, for Daniel Jones, and to really give Daniel Jones, you know, more more help in the passing game. Um, he, it's not his absence on the field has not really been a factor for the Giants so far this season. Uh, the Giants are six and one, uh, with their primary receivers being you know, Richie James, David Sills in the past few weeks, Marcus Johnson, a guy that was elevated from the practice squad. And this team is still winning games. So I understand the move from Joe Shane. And honestly, I, I don't think it was a bad move. When you see Robert Quinn uh, being traded for a fourth rounder, that's insane. So the fact that the Giants were able to get a third and six for Kadarius Tony uh, is pretty cool. Um, and this is something that I know most Giants fans are, are maybe won't be happy, but I feel like as soon as the Kadarius Tony and maybe this, I don't know, I could be wrong. I think Kadarius Tony, uh, change of scenery is probably nice. And I think, uh, Andy Reid and Eric B and Patrick Mahomes will be able to make sure this guy gets the ball and actually shows the league his potential. And I think Kadarius Tony can be a star in this league. I think he has all the tools. He has all the ability. He has the talent to be, uh, a very dynamic receiver, especially in that Kansas City offense. But I don't think uh, the Giants, right as of right now, was a right fit for the guy. Uh, keep in mind, this was a pick. For, uh, this one was one of the a pick from the last draft of the Dave Gettleman era for the Giants. So it's not like Joe Shane, this new regime, was really tied to Kadarius Tony um, as far as future plans go. And also, I, I from what I've been hearing, uh, either from Giants fans, reporters, Twitter, uh, it's not like Kadarius Tony was the Giants' first choice last year. Uh, they traded down originally, and then I think they were trading down, trading down again. Uh, to try to get uh, one of the other players that were, were was on the board for Dave Gettleman, but um, they ultimately they ultimately settled for Kadarius Tony. At the time, I wasn't really that mad of a, I, for the, at the time I was pretty excited. Uh, I know we needed help at receiver. I know we needed another playmaker for Daniel Jones, um, and he he did have some great games against New Orleans and Dallas last year. But other than that, it's been pretty a pretty average showing for Kadarius Tony. Again, this is a guy that. Is a talented receiver. We saw it in Florida, and we saw it in those brief games he had last year. Uh, but this season, he's, he's been really a non-factor. Not really getting on the field. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, he's too eager to get back on the field. And I'm not saying he's not injured. Um, every NFL player gets injured and hurts and has, has nurse injuries. And us being fans and us not being in the locker room, we can only you know speculate as to what uh, that player does as far as rehab goes and how invested they are in the effort they put into getting back on the field. But, you know... If you're looking at, if you're comparing him to guys like Daniel Jones, and Saquon Barkley, and guys that are you know constantly trying to that are fighting to get back on the field uh, despite being injured, um, it is it's not the best look on Kadarius Tony's part. Uh, the fact that he hasn't played a whole lot this season with that hamstring injury, um, yeah. Again, I, I hope Kadarius Tony does well with the Chiefs. I hope uh, that he you know ends up being the player that Giants fans wanted him to be. Uh, but I think some stuff either behind closed doors, off the field. Maybe just wasn't the right fit uh, with the team and the new regime on the direction they want to go, which I'm totally fine for. Uh, Joe Shane has proven since he's been hired as the GM for the Giants that he has made. Um, they're very, they're very meticulous with how they with, with the moves they make. They're very strategic. Uh, they have plans in place, and they're able to get draft capital next year for what seems like to be the first, uh, you know, real free year they have as far as you know, cap space goes, draft picks. Um, not really a whole holdover from the Dave Gettleman era. So overall, I think this is this is good. Um, I wonder um, how if this would have came earlier if the Giants weren't doing so well. Will they have traded Kadarius Tony if the Giants weren't six and one? What if we were one and six at this point? Uh, would would the Kadarius Tony trade come earlier? Um, and with Kadarius Tony being traded, that does uh, beg the question: Will the Giants make a move uh, before the trade deadline to get a receiver? 
Now some some names that have been floated out there have been guys like Chase Claypool, have been uh, DJ Moore and Jerry Judy, um, honest or even Terrace Marshall from the Panthers as well. Um, my preference really, uh, I would love to get Jerry Judy, um, even though he's somewhat unproven as a receiver. I think the talent is there, and he hasn't really had the most stable quarterback conditions this past three years in the league. Uh, you know, and this is a guy that's still on his rookie contract. So uh, worst case scenario, after two years, we can cut Jerry Judy, and we still have him on rookie money for the next two years while we. You know, possibly either run uh, run it back with Daniel Jones or have a, a new quarterback at the helm. Um, the problem with DJ Moore, and I know that that's another big name Giants fans definitely would like to see the Giants get. Uh, DJ Moore just signed an extension before the season. I think he's still under contract until 2025. Uh, so that's a guy we probably still don't even have the money to pay. And unless we're giving up uh, real assets to get DJ Moore, I don't see us really going after DJ Moore, at least not this season. Uh, Terrace Marshall from the Panthers would be another guy who would be a uh, uh, possibly a difference maker that the, the Giants can make a trade with for Terrace Marshall since he's not on that you know extended uh, wide receiver contract that DJ Moore is on. So that would be that would be pretty cool too to get Terrace Marshall. Um, honestly, any upgrade at receiver uh, at this depleted room uh, would be good. No receiver for the Giants currently has over 200 yards receiving. <laughs> so I think the Giants receiving core needs all the help they can get, especially with Stone Shepard being out for the year and the injuries that we've been having, especially Kenny Galladay. Um, Chase Claypool, another guy that I think people would, wouldn't, wouldn't mind having with the Giants. Me personally, um, I was a bigger Chase Claypool fan when he first came into the league a couple years ago. Not so much recently. Uh, I know he can, he's a, he's a big target. He can make big contested catches. Kind of what we expected out of Kenny Galladay, uh, this season. I think Chase Claypool was a little bit more dynamic. I know they give him the ball out the backfield, uh, jet sweeps, things of that nature. But, um, we have to see how that goes. Um. Personally, I don't think Chase Claypool makes that makes that much of a difference. I think uh, I think there I think DJ Moore and Jerry Judy probably have a, a higher ceiling uh, as far as receiving goes and you know talent and ability. But Chase Claypool would be a solid receiver to give Daniel Jones, a uh, big receiver uh, they, can, they can throw the ball deep to, uh, contested catches, things like that. So I think that would be cool too. Uh, definitely, I know Giants fans would want would like to have a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, but I don't think that's possible unless you're trying to give. Uh, you're trying to give away draft capital and some of the younger pieces that we have. And I don't think this regime is about uh, giving away the young pieces that they've uh, proven to be mainstays for this team. Um, and a DeAndre Hopkins trade would probably involve giving up guys like, I don't know, Julian Love, Leonard Williams, people that we don't, that you know are difference makers right now and a bigger reason over 6-1. and one. So um, DeAndre Hopkins, while he would be amazing, and I love D-Hop, I love Nuke, I love him as a receiver, as a guy, <laughs> all that stuff, he would be a huge difference maker for Daniel Jones. I just don't see that happening. I think the more realistic option for us to go after would be a guy like Jerry Judy, who's under rookie contract still, and maybe Terrace Marshall, and maybe on the higher end, more of a dream case scenario, having getting the assets to acquire DJ Moore. So um, that's really all uh, that I have to talk about. Uh, again, Kadarius Tony, uh, you know, uh, didn't work out with the Giants, but I do hope him well. I do wish him the best in Kansas City, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's making plays for this team after he gets back healthy from injury they're on a bye week this week so i think the earliest he can play is next week when the kansas city takes the field after the bye week so we'll see how that goes and i know uh, andy reed is already scheming up plays for this guy to get the ball and i'm sure he'd be excited too um but yeah thank you Kadarius tony for your service i know it wasn't probably the best time you expected for the giants i know uh you know we probably expected a little bit more as far as production goes for the giants but i think everything happens for a reason and i wish you nothing for the best but uh, I can't be mad at this move from Joe Shane and Brian Dayball. Uh, you know, I think for the most part, they're trying to build for the future. And if they don't see Kadarius Tony as a, you know, as an asset or contributing factor for the future success of this team. And like I said earlier, they're six and one without Kadarius Tony really making much of an impact. Same with Kenny Galladay. <laughs> That's another story for another day. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think about the trade. Uh, who do you think the Giants should go after before the trade deadline as far as receiver? Um, DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, uh, you know, Terrace Marshall. Uh, should we go after a bigger name guy? OBJ, still an opportunity there. If he's healthy um, next month, November, that's kind of the timeline from that ACL injury. But let me know in the comments down below what you think of the trade. Do you even think the Giants should go after a receiver uh, this year or wait till the next offseason when there's probably a little bit more uh, flexibility with the cap to sign a bigger name free agent or even uh, target one in the draft? So let me know what your thoughts are. Until next time, it's been your boy, Ty Life, man. Deuces.